I'd like to welcome you all to another in our series of uh, knowledge lunches about the knowledge platforms. And with this lunch today, uh, it brings a close to the first cycle of the knowledge platforms. These lunches are hosted by our managing director, Mahmoud Moheldin, who is, among other things, the chairman of the Knowledge and Learning Council, and he's also the managing director, director for Knowledge and Learning. The Knowledge and Learning Council, as you all may know, had initially selected three platforms for funding and then selected another three six months later. So these platforms, there are now six of them, are experiments in how we do our knowledge work in collaboration and co-generation with outside partners. And what we're going to hear today is about the Jobs Knowledge Platform, but it's a quite unusual event in the way it's formatted. Instead of having the knowledge platform team from inside the World Bank present, we're going to have a fluid and moderated discussion. Uh, I've already mentioned Mahmoud Moheldin. Sitting next to him coming towards me is David Swart, who serves as the Chief Executive Officer of ODES Corporation. Next to him is David Wessel, who is an economics editor for the Wall Street Journal and writes the Capital Column and will be our moderator today. Sitting next to him is Jonathan Donner, a researcher in the Technology for Emerging Markets group at Microsoft Research in Bangalore. Very good, thank you for coming so far to be with us today. And then Jacob Korenblum, who leads Souktel's outreach to the humanitarian aid sector, building on his prior experience in managing economic development for USAID and CEDA. So uh, without further ado, Let me turn it over to the jobs and introduce the discussion. Um, thank you very much, Matt. Thank you for, for the speakers for, uh, for accepting our invitation. As you know, the Jobs Knowledge Platform is a collaborative effort. Here we have the members from the team representing FT, uh, uh, HD, PREM, um, DEC, and PREM. So as you know, jobs is high in the, in the agenda. As we know, recent events in the Middle East, but also on the agendas of the countries in G20, a job is also a, an important political and economic uh, challenge. This requires jobs that uh, could increase the productivity, but also the living in standards, and also that provides social cohesion for better um, protection of jobs. Job creation is critical for development. About 900,000 uh, workers live in $2 a day or less. And also we know that the working conditions in many of the countries are still a challenge. So this requires a new collaborative effort in order to find solutions to the jobs agenda. So with this spirit is uh, how we started the Jobs Knowledge Platform. Uh, with this spirit of collaboration, of bringing stakeholders into the table, of trying to, um, to organize a community that contributes actively to find solutions to the jobs agenda. So just to, not, I, I won't go into all the activities that we have uh, had in the past, um, uh, over a year at least, but uh, I just want to highlight the two important initiatives that we launched, which is experience from the field which uh, the intention is to be an online database showcasing successful project interventions and also policies in the labor market. Uh, as you might, you might have uh, seen, that we launched the call for proposals about three months ago, and our effort is to have this online database by, uh, by August. And then another innovative effort is the working wiki, which is built around the 10 questions of the World Development Report and where we are soliciting um, uh, submissions, uh, you know, uh, comments from our participants. And this, the idea is to provide and give voice on how to find solutions to the jobs agenda. So these are two recent innovations that um, connect very well with the objective of this session, which is on technology and jobs, because technology is changing the way we see and perceive things in terms of the allocation, matching of jobs, uh, in terms of how productivity is being shifted or reallocated across the globe. So without uh, further ado, let me uh, turn to the, to the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as uh, 
As Matt said, I'm David Wessel. I'm the economics editor of the Wall Street Journal, and I'm glad to be here, but no one told me I was going to get to sit at the board table here with these little buttons that say yes, no, and abstain. So before it's over, I hope to solve some of the problems of the world by pushing the button and see if anything actually happens. Maybe money will flow to some unsuspecting emerging market that will think that uh, manna from heaven has come down. Um, <clears throat> it's really an unusual set of people we have here today. Uh, um, uh, Jacob is the head of a, a founder of a company called Suktel that does really interesting work uh, using mobile phone technology to match employers and employees. Uh, Gary Swart is with a company that is using technology to kind of divide, if I got it right, tasks into small tasks that people can do and earn money on. And Jonathan, uh, who I'm not supposed to say this, but he, his, his, all his subordinates are in Bangalore, but he's actually in Cape Town, so he's really a uh, global, uh, the true Davos man here, um, uh, is in the research department of Microsoft looking at ways that technology can be used for emerging markets. And the format we're going to do today is I'm going to uh, ask them some questions and then I'm going to ask you to all join in. I gather there's some way for people who are watching remotely to email questions. Uh, the reason I have a journalist to do this is that I do two things well. I ask dumb questions, and I'm not afraid to interrupt people when they go on too long. So I promise to do both those things. And if somebody here has a question that they think just, you know, is begging to be asked a two-handed intervention, please go ahead. We should be informal, even if we are sitting here at the Security Council of the United Nations or whatever this room is used for. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask each of the gentlemen up here to talk a little bit briefly about, for maybe four or five minutes, about what is it that you actually do, and why is it interesting? Sure. Thanks, David. Uh, so my name is Jacob Kornblum. I'm a co-founder of Souktel. We are the first service uh, in the Middle East to match employers with job seekers using mobile technology, uh, addressing a problem that's prevalent throughout emerging markets, which is the lack of good resources for job seekers or labor market entrants to find where employment is located. Um, in the places where we work, which are primarily Middle East, East African, and Asian labor markets, uh, governments are very resource constrained and are typically unable to provide counseling, uh, job centers, or similar types of support for new labor market entrants. Uh, training institutions have similar challenges. Uh, typically, university, college, or even high school campuses across the Middle East or Africa have very little, if anything, in the way of career counseling, job centers, uh, or similar resources. And the private sector is also quite underdeveloped in this regard. Uh, recruitment or uh, hiring services as we know them here in North America or Europe are much less prevalent in places like the Middle East or Africa. Um, internet access, of course, is also a major challenge. Uh, most people in the countries where we work do not have regular access to the web. So you've got all of these factors lining up to impede or inhibit the connection between labor supply and demand, even in places where there are jobs available and there are qualified, willing workers to carry out these jobs. So our team, we're based in Palestine in the Middle East, but we serve about 15 countries in that region and then in East Africa as well, uh, growing into Southern Africa, uh, and into uh, South Asia. What we've done is develop a very simple, basic service that can be accessed from any mobile phone using text messaging or audio hotlines. And if you're a job seeker, it allows you to input some information about your qualifications. If you're an employer, it lets you input some information about jobs available. And all of those data are then stored up in a cloud in a way that either labor supply or labor demand can access uh, at their own discretion and can ultimately lead to a face-to-face -face meeting and hopefully uh, a job connection. Um, we have uh, close to 20,000 users in the various markets that we operate in. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of employers using the service on a daily basis. They range from local uh, enterprises or small businesses uh, right up to uh, international institutions uh, and employers. Uh, MIT, who I understand some uh, uh, students or alumni of who may be in the room with us today, is one example of a, a US-based employer who has used the platform uh, to hire labor over in the region uh, to assist with testing of some uh, cognitive neuroscience software. So those are some examples. We are trying to make a dent as much as we can, uh, help create some organizing principle or some assisting uh, assistance or support in labor markets that are typically disorganized or a little bit chaotic, um, and uh, happy to answer questions that you may have. And can you give us a, a, a case study? Pick one country, Somalia or wherever, and what kind of jobs are these? You generally matching, and how does the 
how do you support the company? Where does the revenue come from? Sure. Um, if the types of jobs we provide on the service or that are uploaded onto the service, typically by local employers, vary by market. Um, in Palestine, in the Middle East, we're looking more at entry-level white-collar positions. Um, in East Africa, the Horn of Africa, for example, uh, it trends toward blue-collar positions. Popular sectors uh, among entry-level white-collar jobs, not surprisingly, things like IT, graphic design, uh, sales and marketing. Um, Blue-collar opportunities vary. The way the uh, service works from a revenue standpoint is that job seekers will pay a very light premium text message fee. So if you spend two cents to message your friend, you'll spend four cents to access the service, something to that effect. Um, and employers will also pay to post jobs. Um, and through that, the service is able to, in a large part, sustain itself in, in the countries where it operates. Hmm. 